I think infinity has been with the species implicitly even from the beginning. Ever since we realized that we die, that we have finite lives, finite extent in time, we've longed to extend that. We've longed to touch something that's eternal, touch something that's infinitely long in duration. And I think that's with all of us. And I think all of us have that urge to know about, to touch, to engage with something that goes beyond the short little finite lifespan that we're each given. Infinity is intermixed with limitation, where there is a scope of what we can know and calculate and think and do, and there is something outside of that that we have not been able to tackle yet. But those boundaries are breakable. So I think we can ultimately get there, but I don't think we can actually truly appreciate what that is or means. What does it mean for something to be infinite? Is it a meaningful question to ask? I'm not sure the human mind can comprehend many aspects of nature. We have an intuition, but at some point we're guided by the mathematics and one of the triumphs of the human brain is that we've been able to write down a description of nature that takes us beyond what we can comprehend. I think infinity is comprehensible. We can use equations to describe things that we can't actually touch with our hands or see with our eyes. And as long as you allow mathematics into your language, into your discourse, into your lexicon, then yes, you can talk about infinity. Can humans ever understand infinity? I guess that depends on what you mean by understand. I don't think that we're capable of imagining what infinity is because if you think about it most of the things in our life are finite including our lifespans. We can certainly get very close to it through mathematics. Mathematics is the key to understanding the universe without actually having to see things. I think I like that there's no answer to it. I think I like that it drives me to keep looking for an answer. One of the really beautiful things about infinity for me is that it crosses culture, it crosses religion, it crosses all of humanity. It's a really unifying idea. I love thinking about the idea that, you know, there's as much of infinity on the tip of my finger as there is in the whole universe. That's true. That's the most mind-bending, inspiring thing. Our Hindu faith looks at the three events that every element in this universe takes place. The earth, the sun, the moon, all the planets and all the heavenly bodies, right down to the smallest atom, is created and then it exists and then it dies. The soul has an eternal journey until it comes to a place where it does not go anymore. That it has reached heaven or in our place Vaikuntha or infinity. So in physics, infinity crops up in a number of ways. Perhaps the most straightforward one is to imagine how big is space? How far does space go on? If you were to go into a spaceship and go out into the universe, could you keep on going forever 
infinitely far would be that notion of space, or is space finite? Is it the case that if you go sufficiently far out into space, maybe you circle back to your starting point, which would be what would happen if you took a journey on the surface of the Earth? Or, you know, could it be the case that you head out in that spaceship, you go far enough, and you hit some kind of brick wall, some kind of edge or end to space, showing that space would be finite in its extent, not infinite. So this is a question that we don't know the answer to yet, but it's one version of how infinity comes into our description of the universe. So the furthest thing that humans can see is what's called the cosmic microwave background. This is the relic energy, the relic light of the Big Bang itself. You're always looking into the past because of how long it takes that light to get to us. Because the universe is now growing faster over time than light can catch up, there's a physical limit to what we can see. We will never be able to see the edge because everywhere we look is infinite. We are limited in what we can see out in the universe to something called the observable universe. And that's the part of the universe where there's enough time for light emitted by any object out there to have traveled through space and to reach our eyes. Now we believe that observable universe is just a small chunk of a much larger realm, which would be the entire universe. Can we learn about the entire universe even though we might never be able to see it? And the answer to that, I think, is yes. When we write down the laws of physics, we're guided by our observations of the things that we can see, but we believe that the laws apply much beyond, that they are universal laws that may apply absolutely everywhere. So using the mathematics, we gain a new way of seeing. The math allows us to understand what happens outside of the realms that we can actually have direct access to. There isn't actually a biggest counting number because, of course, whatever number you can think of, there's always a number bigger than that. Now let's start with a Google. A Google is one with a hundred zeros after it. A Googleplex is ten to a Google. If you think about it, Googleplex factorial, so one times two times three times four all the way up to a Googleplex is much bigger than a Googleplex. So Whatever number you can think of, there's always a number bigger than that. So it's often talked about in maths that there are different kinds of infinity and different sizes of infinity. And I really love this area of maths. It makes me feel like I'm losing my mind a little bit. And in fact, Georg Cantor, the first person to discover this, did end up in a mental asylum. So some may say that infinity did drive him crazy. In order to understand different sizes of infinity, you need to understand that there are different kinds of numbers. So, for example, the natural numbers are counting numbers. If you think one, two, three, four, all the way up to infinity, these are the natural numbers. Another kind of number is real numbers. Now, the real numbers include fractions and irrational numbers like pi and numbers with decimal places that go on forever. Cantor worked out that the infinity of natural numbers is always smaller than the infinity of real numbers. What he didn't know was whether there were different sizes of infinity between those sets of numbers. He called this the continuum hypothesis. And later on, mathematicians proved that you can neither prove or disprove this continuum hypothesis. In a way, it's a black hole in maths. Even mathematics has its limits.
what is the smallest thing you can see? The smallest object would really be the scale of an atom. Although you would use a microscope of a very special kind, it's a hard question to answer because you have to think about, well, what does it mean to see? What about an electrical signal? Does that count as an observation? If it's an electrical signal, then we can see single electrons moving around. We can even measure properties of those single electrons. Where does it stop? Does it go all the way down to the infinitesimally small? And the answer is no. And I think that's fascinating. It sort of stops. And you can go smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, there's nothing much down there, really. This is a set of three drawings. The title of the work is Infinite. If you look at them really, really closely, what you'll see is a number. Up the very top corner, you've got 0 0.33333, so you've got all these rows of the number three repeating. They're all basically a decimal expression of one third. Three thirds that never quite resolve into a whole. Infinity isn't necessarily being larger and larger and larger. Infinity is the infinitesimally small, getting towards zero but never quite getting there. I guess with that in mind, we must live in an infinite universe. When you talk about infinity in space, you can ask yourself, can you infinitely divide space? So if I consider the region of space between my left hand and my right hand, I divide that in half, and I divide the remaining space in half, and in half, and in half, can you cut up space infinitely far? Or is there a limit to this story? Is there a smallest chunk of space that cannot be subdivided any further? Again, we don't know the answer to a question like that, but it's another version of how infinity comes into our thinking about the universe. In mathematical equations, we say this equation is asymptotically approaching infinity. <laughs> so where it approaches infinity, how long it takes is conjecture. Very often we limit it, we put a frame picture, and what exists within that frame is what we realize, and what goes outside the frame we are not aware of. I believe our observations of the universe are infinite, and it tells us it's infinite. Is there ultimately an end? Yes. I truly believe there actually is an end, and therefore a beginning. Whether that's a quantum fluctuation that caused our Big Bang, whether there's multiple universes in a larger framework, or in the idea that some other process or thing or way created everything that there probably isn't infinity, that there isn't a limit, that there isn't a limitation to what we can know. But will we ever know that? Probably not in my lifetime. Certainly infinity is in our face every day trying to do physics, particularly quantum mechanics. Are those aspects of infinities, are they just a, a trick? Is it a way of getting at the end result? Or does it have some physical meaning? To some extent, that's not a physics question. We sort of branch into metaphysics there and, and philosophy when we try and really interpret what infinity is and what it means. You think about it and you have these moments of clarity where you see it and you just go, oh, I get it. And then in the blink of an eye, it's just gone. We can think about it, but we cannot define it. 
it is indefinable. The concept of infinity is not that easy in a philosophical sense, just as it is in mathematical sense or in the scientific sense. I hate infinity. It tells us we can't do something. It tells us we can't know something. It tells us that we are limited. And ultimately, I do not believe that because in science, we say that we can figure things out through experimentation, through theory, through thinking, through the greatness of what makes humanity humanity. Infinity says the exact opposite of that. Mathematics is built on precise definitions and rigorous logic. So in a way, my role as a mathematician isn't to believe anything, it's to prove things. Belief is a curious word in science. I like to say, what confidence do I have in this or that? And my confidence is always based upon the data. And right now we don't have any data to distinguish between a finite universe and an infinite universe, so there's really no basis for judgment. The question of linking infinity to heaven or Vaikuntha or any other name that you may want to choose as being the ultimate destination is probably a mystery. Yeah, I don't know if we ever grasp it. I think we get flashes of it. <laughs>